Hello and welcome. To, <clears throat> hello and welcome to this late morning taste challenge. I have two American blender whiskeys. One is famous. One is not really anymore. Was long ago. Uh, this is Sunny Brook, Kentucky blended whiskey. They're both eighty proof by both of these challengers. This is blended at an 80-20 blend ratio, meaning it's 80% grain neutral spirits unaged, and it's 20% Kentucky straight whiskey aged four years or more. All right. Um, Beam Centauri, well, really, at that time, it was the Beam Company. Beam bought this from Seagram's way back around 1984, 85, mid-80s. That's when... Uh, Seagram's was starting to slip a lot. Uh, if you read the articles, um, they had a whole division. I think it was called General Spirits, General Wine and Spirits. Uh, and they reassigned all the uh, vice presidents of these divisions. They sold off a lot of brands. One of them was Sunny Brook to Beam. Sunny Brook blended, Sunny Brook straight bourbon. There might have been a Sunny Brook bottled and bond. There might still be a, a straight in a bottled and bond because with Beam Suntory, you just do not know. You can't check their website. You just have to go to the liquor stores and you'd be shocked sometimes by what you see. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to see this when I was at Big Red's Liquor on US Highway 90 business route eastbound in Orange, Texas. It was cheap. It was about $8 after tax. Nice. Uh, I'm already about... 40% through the bottle with, all, with the doing the solo review, which I wasn't too thrilled with it. <clears throat> then the taste challenges. Has it done well in these challenges? No, it hasn't really. <clears throat> a few of the Sazerac brands I went up against, I couldn't tell one from the other. So that means it either lost outright to a lot of the blended whiskeys I went up against, or I couldn't tell it apart from things that were comp comparably priced. So I wouldn't recommend getting it. I mean, unless you're curious like me, you just want to try things out. It's worth it for that, I guess. GNJK said, did I hear you say Sunnybrook is made by Jim Beam other day, or was that a different one? No, it is the Sunnybrook, and it is made by Beam Suntory in America, in Kentucky. It's a Jim Beam bottle. If you go buy a bottle of Kessler, Julius Kessler American Blended Whiskey, um, I believe it's Kentucky Blended, it's same size liter bottle or 750 if you get that. Um, Kessler is more popular. It's like one of the top 10 American whiskeys on the market, believe it or not. You'll never see an advertisement for it or a commercial, but it's it sells. Not in Louisiana. Uh, I can go to Dornex and get Kessler. And here and there, some little obscure places, you'll see a bottle on the shelf, usually a plastic 400 milliliter, you know, 375, I mean to say, or 200 milliliter and occasionally a liter or a handle. Sunnybrook, I've never seen anywhere in Louisiana. Not that I've been to every liquor store by any stretch of the imagination in Louisiana. Bean bottles, they're usually clear. All right. Not too many chips and bubbles. There are some now. But if you get a, a Sazerac bottle from Buffalo Trace or Barton or Glenmore or Fleischmann's, shoot, those bottles are full of pits, bubbles, they're rumpled. <clears throat> it's almost as though they're blowing the glass themselves, like manually doing the old-fashioned glass production method. They may well be. A lot of these companies have their own glass companies, subdivisions. Uh, Anheuser-Busch has their own glass production company in Texas called Longhorn Glass. <clears throat> Come to find out that's been in business since the 1800s. But I don't think they're out there with the old equipment hand blowing it. They, it's made on an assembly line, you know, whatever. whatever. So this is the Beam Suntory Sunny Brook. They used to have it on the website, but they revamped their website. Or if you want to say, I say deteriorated their website. And now you don't see it. That's all I can tell you. The straight whiskeys are aged four years. <clears throat> it's blended with 80% grain spirits, which, you know, is going to mean corn. It's probably got coloring added because I don't think it's going to be that dark age and, you know, being blended with four year aged 
whiskey that's probably aged. Or it could just be bourbon. It might just be Jim Beam. That's a four-year age whiskey that didn't come out right. Uh, yeah, so. Or they have excess Jim Beam. You know, blend it off into Sunny Brook and Kessler. Not a real difficult thing. Maxwell, hello, Ron. He says from Russia, watching from the Russian Federation. <clears throat> I'll say this is the showdown because I always save, save Seagram seven crown for last. I had to go buy another bottle. I couldn't resist. Cost me twelve ninety five at Walmart. <clears throat> yeah, it's usually between thirteen and fifteen dollars a bottle. Say like about fourteen dollars a bottle. Can you find it on sale from time to time? Yeah, they had a bottle for seven bucks about three years ago at um two years ago at Martin Wine Cellar. My friend David bought it. I said, "Why are you buying that?" He said, "Well, seven dollars, you know." Um, it's an embossed bottle. This is the new label. You'll notice they tend to change the labels about every four years. This is the new updated with the big seven. And the crown, you can feel it. The gold, look like gold paint distiller since 1857. That's a true story. Seagram's, but it's not a company anymore. It's just a brand. The company was put out of business by their own ineptitude. It looks like a black name, Seagram's American blended whiskey. But if you look very carefully, it's actually dark, dark, dark brown. It's mahogany brown. It's a dark brown and the bottle's brown. Most of these blended whiskeys are being clear bottles. Brown is better because it protects it from the light. Light can't hurt it. There's a seven embossed on the back with the crown. And then there's seven crowns. What does that mean? I don't know. It might have something to do with a menorah or a Kabbalah, Kabbalistic numerology. And I say that because of the Bronfman family uh, who were uh, Jewish immigrants from Russia. And, and they bought the company from the Seagram family in 1926, I think, Seagram's. And then they lost control of the company in 2000 because they couldn't pay the service on their debt. You know, that's the problem. When, you're, when your revenues are lower than your debt payments, you're going to have some problems. <laughs> uh, Daryl Macias says, cheers from California. Watching at work. Oh, thank you. Make sure you do your work now. All right. Um, so Seagram... I'm stuttering. Seagram's probably has the best looking bottle on the market, really. I mean, it's just classic. You see this at every bar. I've never literally ever been to a restaurant or bar that did not have this on the shelf. And it's always up on the shelf. It's not down in the well. No way. No way it's a rail whiskey that you're going to see down below. You say people call for Seagram's and Coke or Seagram's and 7-Up. They do. That's how famous it is. One of the top five American whiskeys on the market. I mean, if you go to Winn-Dixie, they'll have sales all the time with Seagram's and VO, Seagram's VO. They're the Canadian import, which was sold to Sazerac, I might add. It's still being produced by Diageo till 2024 on a uh, production agreement. And then Sazerac Canada is going to, I guess, they're probably already aging some. VO and then they'll just take over once the um, Diageo VO stocks are exhausted. But anyway, alcohol by volume 40%, 97 calories per serving. Hmm. There's 17 servings in this container and it's a 1.5 ounce serving. So what's a serving of American whiskey? One and a half ounces, <clears throat> which contains 97 calories. Blended and bottled by the Seven Crown Distilling Company, Norwalk, Connecticut. 75% grain neutral, neutral grain spirits. Some will say grain neutral spirits. Same thing. Yeah, grain neutral spirits, neutral grain spirits. Just means whiskey that hasn't been aged to give it any color or aroma or flavor. And it's not blended with wheat or rye. It's usually just corn. Corn is your cheapest commodity. Can you make grain spirits out of any grain? Yes, of course you can make it out of rice. But since corn is government subsidized, they use it. I, I didn't say I supported that subsidy. I do not support subsidies for these products, but that's another political uh, idea. There's a notch in the back for when you have it on the rack so it doesn't roll off, you know, 
So it's famous. All right, enough of that. A whiskey of distinctive character, smooth, rich, full flavored without a trace of heaviness. And I would agree with all of that. I'm going to look at the website for a moment before we start the challenge. If you want to call it a challenge, I don't think it will be very challenging. I'm looking at the website right now. I got a link below. Seagram Sound Blended Whiskey. An American icon with a rich heritage. Yes. You will actually see advertisements for this from time to time. TV and radio, I haven't seen it. It's carefully blended and aged in oak. Uh, with its smooth, sweet taste and creamy vanilla finish, Seagram 7 Crown, a seven, Seagram 7 Crown approachable. And I think it should say crowns, apostrophe S, yes, but whatever. Approachable and smooth taste profile stands up against today's biggest shot brands. And in its signature drink, the 7 and 7. So they're telling you right there, it's made for taking shots at the local dive bar, which they, they kind of accentuate on their Facebook page. <clears throat> and it's made for cocktails. Is it a sipper? It isn't really made for that. Nose, tasting features, nose, alluring, clean and crisp with a hint of citrus. It's definitely very woody in the nose. First thing you smell is just oak barrel. It's, it's, it just screams oak barrel. Taste, smooth, sweet taste. Finish, creamy, little finish. Featured cocktail, the 7-7. Seven, seven. Showing a highball glass. Ounce and a half of Seagram's. Five ounces of 7-Up. Slice a lime. They tell you how to make it. Add add to a highball glass with ice. Stir well. Garnish with a lime slice. Okay, bye now. And then they got a locator tool. Not that you would ever need the locator tool because, you know, like, every liquor store will have it. It's, it's, what are some other mixed drinks here? Seagram 7 and Cola, another highball. 7 and Ginger Ale, no. Seagram 7 on the rocks and a rocks glass. Now there's, there's Seagram's Dark Honey. These are some other whiskeys they make. Some, not all. The Dark Honey and the Apple. I've never tried their whiskey liqueurs, and, and that's not the only ones. I have seen Seagram's cinnamon. I know I've seen the cinnamon. There may be a Seagram's like fireball type thing, you know, spicy red pepper type concoction item. But I'm not going to worry about that right now because I don't plan to buy those anyway. Let's just do it because at the top of the hour, Start fixing the salad and cooking the corn, and corn soup that my neighbor made me. She made fruit salad, too. I don't know if she has any meat in it, but I have some andouille sausage I can put in it. If she doesn't, I'm going to cut some onions up. They, these do not look alike at all. This is, this is going to be a shambles. I don't care. You know what? I don't answer to Jim Beam Company. Y'all want to put out some flim flam stuff that's not enjoyable? That is not my problem, really. Although Kessler was okay. Kessler was more of a battler, you know, it was more legit to me. But go over there, Seagrams. Yeah, it's getting bright. Somebody told me last night, your camera screwed up. I said, no, it's, I had the, even though we were doing the, uh, the uh what you call it wild card wednesday and it was getting to be after 7 p.m central it was still sun was out you know this time of year and so i, I um adjusted the blinds and i said and ronnie i say ain't nothing wrong with your camera i said i know that it's a 720 it's not really high def these days but um it works these taste challenges exist more of a as a radio show anyway because people listen to them while they're at work, driving in the car and all of that. They don't have to sit there and look like, oh, look, look, look. I mean, we know what whiskey looks like. We know what I look like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, 
when I tell people I watched your beer review, what I really mean is I listen to it mostly. Now, if they say, look how strange the beer looks, I'll look. Oh, it is weird. You know, but generally you're just listening. Like Henry Hill, you're just listening. Um, alcohol eggs, yeah, they both have that, but the Seagram's is more refined. Like if you look, they're just perfectly aligned little fence posts, fence posts and fence boards. Whereas the 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 Sunny Brook, I was gonna say the bean, is more ragged. It's brown. This is deep chestnut brown. If they have coloring added, fine, but they do a good job. This thing is just yellow, gold, amber. Looks fine. All right. Looks fine. Looks fine. No problem. No big deal. No big deal. But the sequence looks way better. It just looks better. It just looks better. You know why? It is better. You say, well, yeah, it costs almost twice the price. That's right. Sure it does. And yeah, okay. Fair enough, you're buying the name. You say, you're buying the name, you're buying the name. Yeah, but you're buying the quality, too. You know what I'm saying? You're buying the quality. Yeah, with Budweiser, you're buying the name. You pay $10.99. These days, $11.99 for a 12-pack. Other brands, you can get for eight on a sale, $8.99, $9.99, whatever. I do that. I get the substitutes. I don't buy the Budweiser and pay the extra two, three dollars. <laughs> but if you think about it real carefully, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, I'm not going to say it, but I was going to say uh, if you really double down on it, you do get the quality. It's there. It's not even. I don't care. Other people say, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. Budweiser is like an ice pick in the uh, temple. I'm the one that came up with that. It's harsh. It gives me a nasty headache. I know it does give some people a nasty headache. I think it's a yeast strain and a dirty hangover. I, it, I, it never bothers me ever. Um, I just think you're getting a little better quality. All right. But anyway, um, <laughs> Crown Royal, well, that's another story for another day. I'm not I'm not really sure about that. I can't comment on that because I, I, I have, what experience do I have? I did a solo review and then I taste it again in a duo with minimal amounts of what, what we taste, an ounce and a half a serving. You can't really go on that too much. So, but anyway, let's, I got to close my eyes because if I glance, I'm going to know. I mean, I'm going to know. I'm going to know anyway. Now, does the 25% straight whiskey make a difference going up against 20%, it does seem to make a difference. Okay, with King Square, that's 27 and a half percent straight bourbon or whatever kind of whiskey they're using. Straight whiskey though. But that's a strange product. It's like somebody over there at Auburndale, Florida, over there down the road from Orlando, at their blended plant went berserk. It's like somebody said, ah, I'm crazy. I'm gonna add so much rye whiskey, it's gonna blow their minds. They're gonna think they're drinking pepper. Yeah, it worked because it's blowing my mind. Yeah, but that's that's King Square, that's an oddity of all oddities. Chances are you'll never see it, so why even bring it up? All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Daryl said, I should have said I'm listening. Right. Nina, you already. Hey, you, Nina, did it did it come in the purple bag? I oh, know. I just washed my feet. This is spiritual. <laughs> She's she does metaphysical examinations of beer like I do beer, wine, and whiskey, liquor, goods. I said when you drink these, you got to do like Stevie Nicks in the blue lamp. You don't listen to her, you listen through her. And that's what I say. You don't drink the whiskey, you think the whiskey. You know what I'm saying? You drink through it. Now I know you're saying, yeah, right. It's really metaphysical, you old drunk. You could ridicule, I mean, I don't care. Um, 
I'm just saying you just got to think about it like that. It's like an esoteric practice. Seven crowns. Mm, I don't know about this. Smells kind of. See, these blind taste tests would be scary uh, because you, you say, I mixed them up. I'm not editing. It's live. What if I get it wrong and I just built it up for two weeks? I know it. you'd be so shamed. But then I'll do it again. You know, I'll do it again. I'm just like the Beach Boys. Let's get together and do it again. All right. But they keep fighting with each other and they don't get along. I want to get along with all y'all. All right. Okay. All right. Kind of some strange, strange lemon marmalade. Does such a thing exist? But then Seagram said citrus, so but. Mm, it smells creamy. I don't know about dreamy. Got me confused. I think it's the, y'all can see the colors, but I can't. But I think that's the sequence. But boy, I'm nervous like a, man, I'm nervous like a person who's nervous. Okay. She said Charles Manson was a beach boy. Well, he affiliated with them. Spiritual Seagram 7, right? I had a 7 up in Seagram's on 7, Ju July 7th of 07. See, that gave you some kind of, she's probably holding crystals when she did it. And that's probably why she does such good beer reviews. Got, got some kind of energy, ley lines. And she went to the Georgia guide stones and all of those things. All right. Walked softly through the desert sand. She was on a checkerboard tile floor. It all, it all means things. It all means things, y'all. Something. And you say, what does it mean? Everything, nothing. All right. Hmm. <clears throat> To the frozen borderline. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Gave me the heebie jeebies. Well, that's wood, wood sweetness. They say on the, what they say, I just read on the website sweet. It is sweet though. Smooth. Yeah, it's kind of smooth. I hadn't drank any beer today, no wine. I just did the taste challenge this morning and I drank three cups of coffee. Now, that's the absolute truth. Because I'm like the. I'm like, I'm like the tubes, you know. Why would I lie? One in a million whiskey. Okay. And you can talk to a pretty girl for a dollar. All right. Um, now that taste is so drab. You know how you feel right now? Well, I feel even worse because that taste. That tastes too drab. You say drab. I mean drab, like drab, dull, bland, boring, nothingness. Well, hey, that's an improvement. Because I was talking about how Sunnybrook tasted nasty in some cases, depending on what whiskey you're going against. Do get a little wood, though. I got that at the other one the other morning when I said, you little devil, because I was ripping its guts out, and then I, it snuck up on me and presented wood barrel. I said, ooh. Daisy May and Biff were grooving on the street. All right. Her nose became her feet. You know what they say about honey bears. 
when you shave off all of their hair. You have a hairy minded bear bear. All right. Boring is much better than nasty. You ain't you ain't lying, Flippy Gat. I'd rather drink boring whiskey than nasty. Do I like fennel? I don't even know what that is. Sounds like some kind of cookie from Ireland. All right. <laughs> oh man. All right. They say, you say, they don't eat cookies, they eat digestive biscuits. Oh, well. Why must things be so difficult? I need to start recording these, and then if they don't come out, I'll just delete them, and then I could just post them when they work out, and then you'll never know. You'd be like, Girl interrupted. I'll say, did you, did you, uh, you'll say to me, did you um, get anything wrong? And I'll say, I'll never tell. Hello, Travis. All right. Um, That was just like regular old wood aged, barrel aged, oak aged, straightforward whiskey product. There's nothing aberrant about it, off putting, unbearable, or not even that far. It's just nothing wrong about it. Now, does it, do I sip it and say, oh, we, I just got to sit around the fire or uh, on the beach and, 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 and reflect? No, you do just what they say on the website. You mix it with Coke, seven up, ginger, all of these things, and you put it on ice and you, 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 you stir it and then you say, oh, we, let me make a, let me drink a highball. And then you move on. You don't think about it because you're not obsessed with beer, wine, and liquor brands. You're just a normal person who doesn't do all this. Okay. I'll admit it. <laughs> you might say you're eccentric. No normal people do that. Oh, I know, I know that. <laughs> But I'm like Archie Bunker. I didn't mean no harm. <laughs> I didn't mean no harm. All right. Um, man, I'll tell you what about these things. You never know what's going to happen. Like you say, this is trash. And this is this is a good one. This is famous. It's one of the top five, top five whiskeys in America. But boy, by golly, when you do one against the other, you just never know what they're going to bring out. And that's what I've been preaching. I've been preaching that same sermon since Katie Bell was a feminine figure. Of I'll tell you what, look, you could contact anybody you want. Walter Mondale, Kukla Fran and Ollie, I don't care. You, you put one of these products against another and you just don't know what's gonna come out. And, and it, it's like no bearing on the previous. Uh, taste challenge. So, mm -hmm. and when you're overconfident, like I was this morning, I was painting too some crown moldings, but you don't care about that. Um, I was so confident, and then I thought, let me just do it. It's going to be a, a laugh, anyhow. But then I'm doing the taste challenge, and I'm thinking, mm, I'm a little nervous here. I would get Beam's eight star though if I was going to buy a Jim Beam blended whiskey. And I wouldn't be looking to do that. But if I was going to buy one, I'd get the Beams 8-star. You heard what I said? I'd get the Beams 8-star. I'd get the 8-star. 
it's 80, 20 used to be 75, 25. I could still get 75, 25 bottles, but those people are out of their minds with their prices. They got five bottles left and they're going to keep five bottles left. Nobody with any kind of good sense of pay that. I wouldn't. I say, Oh no, but get the eight star good. That's your best route. What, what Jim beam, what beam blended whiskey tastes the most like Jim beam beams, eight star. And my friend David says, it's actually not that bad. I said, I know. Christy McNichol was in the All right. Um, all right, I'm ready to call it because I'm getting so nervous. I can't even think straight. Never had any Sunnybrook, but Seagram's is drier than Canadian Club. It is really. You're right. I'm out of Canadian club. The only Canadian club I have left is their small batch classic 12, 12 year age. Is that the best Canadian whiskey I ever tried? Yes, easily. Easily. I mean, it's, there's no contest there. That's, you say, well, that's $25 about, I know it is $25 about, it deserves it. All those other, well, I don't want to say anything because they got a lot of good cheap Canadian whiskeys. Is Canadian blended whiskey better than American blended whiskey? United States blended whiskey. Um, I think it is, but I'm not trying to be unpatriotic. I got to sniff the residue. Oh, I think that's Seagram's, man. If I look at that and it says SB, I'm going to reevaluate everything, question everything. I'll be pretty dismayed till Saturday morning when I start up with the Crown Royal. <laughs> That's going to be so exciting. I can't wait. I just like, I just don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait, but I'm going to wait. I got them all lined up. I'm so excited like a kid at Christmas morning when they say, oh, look, I got my cowboy and Indian set. Let's line them all up so they can have a fight. I did that too once. But um, um, I got the heir to the throne in there. I got... Gibson's finest. I'd hate to try their worst. Uh, I, I got, um, of course, the crown, the um, Canadian Club Classic 12. I can't wait. I'm like Stevie Nicks. I can't wait. Okay. I can't wait. All right. Here we go. La, la, la. All right. Anyway. All right. Enough of that. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I just wanted to rock a little, you know. All right. So anyway, I say, I say that this is the Seagram's. Good grief. That's the Sunny Brook. Well, I guess you just don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People are saying, well, I'm never going to watch your videos again because you said, I know what I said. <sighs> Notice I didn't really say a winner on this. I was so confused. I couldn't tell them apart. Boy. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> Heck. But I do talk about how you need to um, really emphasize ta taste challenges and do them blind. I'm so frustrated when I watch these people do beer reviews and they be pouring it in, looking at it. There's the whatever IPA. And there's the other IPA. Now, let me taste them. Well, I mean, you're looking at it. You you might love that one, and then that one you had talked about was no good, and so then you have this in unaware, you have this un... You, you have a bias of which you're unaware, is what I'm trying to say. An undetected bias, an ingrained bias. You say, you mean people can be biased and not realize it? Sure. We all are. That's why you do blind... Why do you think you do blind taste tests? That's why polls can be inaccurate because of confirmation bias. People hang up on polls. They delete them. They say, oh, no, not a poll. So then who does polls? Political polls. Activist people, whether they're right wing, left wing, middle wing. And so they, they, they go to all the county council meetings, they write letters to the editor, they send emails to their local congressman or their state representative. That's what they do. So they'll answer the, 
They'll, they'll answer the poll. And they'll say, oh, man, most Americans are worried about this uh, issue. No, the reality is most Americans are probably indifferent to it and don't even care. But you got the people answering the poll that are uh, activists. That's an activist. I don't know the official term, but it's like activist biased. Bias. And then the problem with looking at the, the brand is then you have confirmation bias. What's confirmation bias? You consider the things that back up your contention and you disregard the things that don't back it up. Blind taste tests can, to a large extent, factor that out. Can't completely do it. That's why I had my eyes closed because I didn't want to glance and see the color. If I'd have seen that mahogany, I'd have said, what well, is seven crown? Well, I'm shocked to say I would, to try to cover it up and and say, uh, oh, well, I was painting and so I got paint fumes in my nose and it screwed me up. I mean, it could be true, but I'm not gonna use that. Uh, oh, I, I, I was nervous. No, 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 no. I got it wrong and I gotta live with it. I'm, I'm shocked. I wouldn't have believed it. I'd have put, I actually would have taken that bet. If you just said, I bet you $5 you'll lose. I'd say, you're crazy. I bet you 10, 10 to five, two to one. No way I'll lose, never. It's impossible, it cannot happen. It did, I got it wrong. And I couldn't even tell which one tasted better. So I, I'm humiliated. Okay, I'm. Uh, you say that's that Jim Bean revenge. You you talk too much smack. You want to get out there on the internet, uh, being all profound and everything, making you little jokes about music, and 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 all these metaphysical references and all, trying to impress everybody. But then, oh, Bean came back with fury. They showed what they were about. You thought it was a game, and now you found out it's not a game. Yes. And I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I'm so humble. I'm proud of being humble. All right? I'm so humble that I'm proud of it. Now, that's humble. I'm so humble, I'll brag about it. Okay, now we'll do the comments since I'm already, it's, the, the whole thing is a catastrophe, but anyway... If you're not willing to take the risk, don't do the blind taste challenge. Well, guess what? Most people aren't willing to take the risk because how many blind taste challenges do you see week to week on the internet? I don't see too many unless I'm missing something and I don't see it. Uh, I never had a Sunny Brook, but uh, Seagram's is dry. Oh, yes, I read it. There's a policeman on Sunny. Okay. Do you like Rich and Rare? Sure, I do, says uh, Christina Nowakowski. I like Rich and Rare. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I like Richard Rare Reserve even more. <clears throat> Maybe swish it in your mouth before the final call. Yeah. I could do that. I just I don't think it would have made a difference. I just really honestly don't think it would have made a difference. So that's how shocked I am. Probably harder when your palate had a lot, maybe some water. Yeah, but my palate hasn't had a lot. I drink coffee. You say, well, that's a factor. It's not a factor. I drink coffee every day, three cups, and then I do the taste challenges. Never seen them. Didn't seem to matter in the past. I drank water the rest of the morning. Was I eating a lot of food? No. Had some fruit salad. That was 7.30 in the morning. So I can't make excuses. Don't Let's not try to make excuses. Well, it was a good taste challenge, says G and JK. Thank you, because um, I guess if you got fennel is a carrot, onion, celery, carrot, onion, celery. Oh, that sounds like something I would like. Uh, it's hard. What if you mixed it with like cream cheese, carrot, onion, and celery? It's hard work, taster's choice. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's over. I can't believe it. I don't want to believe it. I want to delete the video and tell you the truth and pretend it never happened, but that would be dishonest and, and then I'd just be an old fake. No, I got to live with it. Oh, uh, uh, well, sorry, y'all. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't have any words. I just got it wrong. I, I, I can't. Well, I'll say this much. Anytime you think you really have it down pat on American blended whiskey, you better check yourself because you might wreck yourself. You know, that's street talk. That's you say, oh, no, don't go back to 2003 on that. That's so old. I know, but I feel old now after this. 
I feel so old now. After doing this taste challenge and getting it wrong, I'd rather say shake your booty, keep on trucking. And I feel like doing the bump. I mean, I just it's it's a it's a wreck. It's a wreck. It's a wreck. I'm going to listen to ABBA. All right. Anyway. Uh so we'll come back, try to climb out the out the hole. Try to climb out the hole. Saturday morning, Crown Royal. Oh, well, I don't feel bad if I get that wrong because I, I, I'm not making any predictions. I'm just saying Crown Royal versus uh, Heir to the Throne, I really just don't know. I just do not know what's going to happen. But this was this was bad. This was a bad one. This was – is it – as far as getting it wrong, yes. I, I would say so. Uh, I would say so. It was worse than the Kiss solo albums from, from 1978. Well, I don't know if it's that bad, <laughs> but it was bad. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> we'll only get better with practice. I got a lot of practicing to do, y'all. And uh, you could call it work, but I just call it gaming. <laughs> Flippy guy, it's hard to say from simultaneous, I guess, but that's important to me with a whiskey. Don't want to taste it all day. I wouldn't want to taste it all day, no. What time do you go on Saturday morning, says Daryl? Oh, about, about 6.30 Eastern time. That's when I do my taste challenges. I try to go on about 6.30 Eastern time. Sometimes I'm a little late, might be 6.40. 5.30 Central, yes. Uh, and I'm there. I, I try to do them every, every Saturday, Sunday morning, day Thursday if I'm able. Um, anyway, that's it. That's it. It's over. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, he says thanks. You're welcome. Well, thanks thanks for watching this failure. But no more liquor today. I know that much. But I got some beer to drink. <laughs>